Hey, this is Chris, and welcome back to the Popcorn Finance Back to School series. This is week four of a five-week series, and each week I'll be joined by a great guest, and we're going to look at college from a different angle. In today's episode, we're going to help you get a better handle on your student loans, and we have a special listener call in. This is Chris. Hope you're doing well, and welcome to Popcorn Finance, where we discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. I appreciate you coming back and joining me again. And today, I'm happy to be joined by Robert Farrington. He's the founder of thecollegeinvestor.com, which is a great resource for millennials to help them get out of student loan debt and help them start build wealth for their future, which I think is what everyone wants wants to do with their life. So, uh, you know, I just want to bring on the mic, Robert. How's it going? It is going great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for some of your time. And I specifically wanted to bring you on the show because I got a call from a very special caller. Hey, Chris, it's your brother. As you know, I'm starting grad school next week and I'm not going to be able to work. So I had to take out loans to pay for bills, etc. So I wanted to know what is the difference between subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans? And um, can you give me a little help on interest rates and what that means for me in the future? Keep doing your thing. You're doing a good job, man. All right. So that was my brother, <laughs> Marlon. Appreciate him calling in and uh, taking some time to be a part of the show here. And so, uh, Robert, how about we tackle the first part of his question, which is, you know, what's the difference between subsidized and unsubsidized student loans? Yeah, definitely. So when you apply for federal student aid with your FAFSA, you go and uh, you get an email from your financial aid office, like right before you're going to start college. And it's going to say like, here's your financial aid award. And in that award, it'll tell you any types of scholarships, grants, and student loans that you're eligible for. And with federal student loans, there's two main types. There is the subsidized loan and the unsubsidized loan. Now, for the most part, they're exactly the same thing, except if you have a financial need, you might qualify for the subsidized loan, which it gives you a couple added benefits that you don't get with the unsubsidized loan. Specifically with the subsidized loan, the government covers your interest while you're in school, which is a really cool perk. So it means it's going to save you a little bit of money all the way through school. Also, if you're deferring it in the future for any other reason, like uh, let's say that you're you have a financial hardship or you're disabled, the government doesn't or picks up the interest during any periods of deferment as well. So what you get it deferred while you're in college, the government picks up the interest, and if you have any deferments after college, they pick up the interest. So in the end, that can result in some savings of a few thousand dollars, uh, you know, depending on the the balance of your loans, which it's a cool deal. Um, the unsubsidized loan still offers. A all the same benefits. You have income-driven repayment plans. You have potential for student loan forgiveness after you graduate. But, you know, it doesn't take care of that interest while you're in school. You do accrue interest. And so, you know, if you had the same dollar amount in a subsidized and unsubsidized loan, by the time you graduate college, your unsubsidized loan is going to be a bigger balance just because you've been accruing interest that whole time. Oh, no, that's really interesting. So so essentially, the government's just taking care of your interest payments in a subsidized loan. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about that part accruing and compounding interest while you're still in school. Exactly. So it's just a little added perk to it. And, you know, the loan value, you're probably, you know, some people you might get um, when you get your financial aid awards, some people might qualify for all subsidized loans, but that's very rare. What typically happens is you might qualify for, say, $1,500 in a subsidized loan, and then they might give you another, you know, $6,000 as an unsubsidized loan. So you might get a little bit of aid, um, which, you know, every little bit helps. So don't dismiss it. But, uh, you know, you're probably not going to get your full student loan amount as a subsidized loan. Ah, okay, that's important. So you're not going to walk in there and they say, here's $40,000 in subsidized loans. That's not that's more than likely not going to happen, right? Not at all. And you know, the flip side too, is that there's limits. So, you know, when you're borrowing, you know, you're not going to be able to borrow whole amount on your loan. So, you know, there is lower limits for what you can get for your subsidized and unsubsidized loan, especially when you're an undergraduate, you're only going to be able to get, I think it's $5,500 or $6,500 in um, student loans from the federal government when you are an undergraduate student. Now that amount goes up significantly when you're a graduate student, but it might not cover the full amount, which can be a problem for some people. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize the the limit was that low. So, I mean, the way college is now that for a lot of schools, that doesn't cover, I guess, even the majority sometimes, depending on where you choose to go to school. 
It really doesn't. When that's the problem is it does go up every single year as you, you know, go through school. But on the flip side, uh, it's low when you're a freshman or a sophomore. Those first two years, they don't let you borrow that much money, which is good and bad, right? It like puts a limit. So maybe you have to think twice about how much you borrow. But on the same time, it can make college uh, expensive to um, pay for if you need more. Uh, no, that's a good point. So maybe if you're out there and you're considering, you know, the schools you want to go to, maybe this can help you if you have the if you have the choice of where you want to go, maybe help you make your decision and say, hey, you know, if I can't actually get an unsubsidized loan, which is preferable, <laughs> then, then maybe I should choose a less expensive school if you have the option. Exactly. And I'm a big believer in that. Like my number one tip for people that come and have to take student loans out for college is you have to think about your ROI when it comes to paying for college. You know, it's just like any other investment. Your education is an investment in your future. And so if you overpay for this investment, you're not going to get the value about it and you're going to really struggle financially for the rest of your life. So you really need to think about it. If you want to be a teacher, we need teachers. I love teachers, but don't go out and spend 150 thousand dollars in student loans to be a teacher it's not necessary it's not required and you're way overpaying instead you know maybe you borrow twenty thousand dollars for four years of education to be a teacher you go to a community college you go to a state school um, and you really are conscious about your cost but at least when you graduate and you become a teacher you're going to feel financially secure because you're going to be able to afford the cost of your education on your teacher's salary that, that's a great point. And, you know, I, I talked with uh, Cody from Fly to Fi about that as well as, like, you know, choosing the college and the major for the career you want and kind of keeping all that in line. Because, I mean, that's that's a great point that, you know, you don't if you know you're only going to make forty thousand dollars, don't take out one hundred and forty thousand dollars in student loans. It's the math isn't going to work out in your favor. In a, it's in those not. Situations. And you're just you're just going to struggle financially for the rest of your life. So it's like you're you're going to regret that choice every day. Like it's better to you know really think about alternatives. Now it doesn't mean change your career. It just means borrowing smart. Great point. Great point there, Robert. And you know let's let's jump on to his second point here, where or I should say his second question. Uh, and he wanted to know you know how, what help can he get on interest rates and understanding what that means for him in the future. And I think what he means by that is, you know, interest rates, they they compound in these situations, these loans, which is normally a good thing in your savings account, but on a loan, I, that's not working in your favor. And so, uh, you know, could you give a little advice or maybe some understanding of what people can expect as far as the impact of interest on these student loans? Yeah. So the best student loan rates you're probably going to get are going to be those federal student loans, the direct subsidized, the direct unsubsidized loans. So as of today, when we're recording this podcast, so these are loans that are taking out in 2018, uh, the subsidized and unsubsidized loan for undergraduates is 4.45%. And that's a fixed rate loan. And that's really good. If you're getting a graduate student loan, because I think you said your brother's going to graduate school here. Um, you know, so his direct uh, loan for graduate school is 6%. And that's still a really good rate for a fixed rate loan. Um, because what you see, I think what your brother's seeing out there is you see a lot of companies advertising. So there's a lot of student loan lenders out there that are private lenders and they're advertising super low rates, maybe like 3.99, 4.99 for their student loans. And those are good rates. But to typically get those low rates, you typically have to get a variable rate loan, which mm -hmm. means that that loan can rise in the future. So you know what? The rate today in year one is 3.99. But that's not to say that rate's not going to go up the next couple of years because interest rates are rising today in the economy. Part two is to get the lowest interest rates on a loan, you also typically have to get a short period of time loan. And I'm talking a three-year or a five-year loan. Wow. And that could be challenging because the shorter the loan period, right, the higher monthly payment you're going to pay. And so when you're looking at these federal loans, most federal loans, you automatically default into a 10-year repayment plan. So you're getting a 6% for that graduate loan over 10 years. It's a really good interest rate. And if you try to find the same thing on a private student loan, um, if you're looking at a 10-year repayment that's fixed, you're probably going to be about 8%. They're typically about 2% higher, even if you have excellent credit. Robert, before we get out of here, do you have like one piece of advice or another tip for people who do have student loans that they've already taken out? 
Yeah, if you are dealing with student loan debt, the number one piece of advice I have is to get organized so that you can make a smart financial decision about your loan. Because it's not uncommon that you have five or six different loans after you graduate, right? You got one for every single year of school. You maybe got one for summer school. Like get all your loans, put them on a spreadsheet or some kind of tracking program and really just start chipping away at the lowest balance loan. Uh, Or if you can't afford your loans, get on a repayment plan that you can't afford because the worst thing that you can do is avoid making payments on your student loans. They can garnish your wages. They can garnish your tax refunds. They can garnish your social security. You're not going to get rid of these loans in bankruptcy. So go get organized with them. I I love that. And that's one of the hardest things for me is organization sometimes. And, you know, it sounds it's kind of scary and intimidating, but I think it's great advice because you can't really get yourself into a better position until you really understand where you are. Exactly. And it's confusing. There's so many options. There's so many types of loans. Like you could have multiple loans. Like they don't make this easy on you. (laughs) No, no, not at all. (laughs) Well, you know, I, I think one place where things are made much easier for everyone is the collegeinvestor.com. So Robert, you know, is there any place in particular on your website that you can uh, direct people to if they want to get more information and kind of find out more about what you're doing? Yeah, if you come to the homepage, you go to the collegeinvestor.com and I'll make it collegeinvestor.com slash popcorn finance and it will take you right to everything you want to know about student loan debt. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. That should be easy for everyone to remember. <laughs> yeah, collegeinvestor.com slash popcorn finance. It'll be everything you could ever want to know, student loans. And if you want to learn about investing, we got that there too. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate you coming on and, and helping my brother out. I'm sure <laughs> he can definitely use this information. And, uh, you know, I think everyone else who's been listening as well, to be able to take something away from this and hopefully help them get their student loans under control. I hope so. That's that's the goal. Hey, well, thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll definitely put all this in the show notes so everyone can check it out and uh, go check out your site and what you're doing over there. Sounds great. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, anytime. First, I want to say thanks to my little brother, Marlon, for calling in and being a part of the show. You know, at this point, he's already into his second year of grad school and he's doing a really great job. So, yeah, I'm I'm really proud of that guy. And, you know, who would have thought that that little brat that followed me around everywhere and got me in trouble uh, would actually be making something of his life? You know, I would have never seen it coming. So, (laughs) but no, yeah, no, I really, really appreciate him calling in and, uh, and just being a part of the show. You know, second, thanks to Robert for sharing some great information and for setting up the special page you can go to to get some extra resources. So if you go to the collegeinvestor.com slash popcorn finance, it's a page there with a ton of information to help you get a get a hold of your student loans and take them on and get, get rid of that stuff. I know I know you're tired of having that in your life. And uh, Robert does a great job of, of showing you how to do that and also sharing his story of how he actually got rid of his student loan debt. And I'm sad to say that next week will be the fifth and final week of the back to school series. But it's still a fun conversation, and I wanted to save this for the end. In next week's episode, I'm joined by Gene and Parker from the Creators Group, who I met in Philadelphia at Podcast Movement, and they were the ones who helped film the little promotional video that I put together there. And I've shared it on social media, um, so if you look for Popcorn Finance on Instagram, you'll see it up there. So I'll, I'll, I'll repost it again, just in case it's kind of buried in, uh, in some of the other posts. Together, we have a fun and open conversation about the importance of college, its role in our lives, and taking an alternative route. If you've been enjoying the Back to School series and this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have the time, you have 30 seconds, stop by, leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, and I'll greatly appreciate it. And you know what? I'm going to read it on the show. So as always, thanks for joining me for another bag of popcorn. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.